have our first building stepping stone, building block. Now look at that. A couple of months ago, I got this big softbox over there and I wanted to 3D print a grid for it to light form, beam form the light into my face and not spill it over the entire room. I was searching YouTube for good techniques to do this in Fusion 360, but all I found was really cumbersome and awkward to use and not really working for me and frustrated me until I found a really nice approach and made a video on it. Um, now recently this video got a lot of valuable and meaningful and cool comments pointing me to subtle differences in the approach and I liked them so much that I decided to make an updated version of the video, which I did a couple of weeks ago. And then on this video, on the updated video, there were again a lot of valuable comments pointing me to features of Fusion 360 that I was completely unaware of until then. And now taking this, I decided to make again, yet again, an updated version of the updated version. And as this big softbox over there, or rather the, the grid is slowly coming apart after months and months of usage, uh, and also it was the first attempt uh, and was actually working great but now you know some deficiencies are actually showing i have some tape here because some of the pieces are not really uh, clamped together there are here are um, spaces where the grid actually didn't print properly so in short i want to have a new one and this comes together as the perfect opportunity to make a full tutorial on how to do hexagon grids in fusion 360 and combine them to form such a big grid for, for example, a softbox like this. Shall we go over to Fusion? Let's, let's start. All right, let's jump into Fusion. So before we do actual design steps, I would like to put down a couple of variables that define the shape and the geometry of the hexagons, as this is something that might change over time. So I might realize that those polygons are actually too small or too too big. The depth is maybe not enough and the thickness is not enough. Maybe it is uh, falling apart while it's printing or when I'm printing it, or it's actually too, you know, taking up too much light. So I would like to have those parameters as variables so I can change them throughout the process uh, and later on very easily without going on all the detailed steps of the um, of, of the design steps itself. So let's start with depth, which in my case is 30 millimeters. So that's the the depth of the thing, of the thing, right? Then we have um, polygon width, and that's not how you spell polygon. You didn't see that, right? And here we go with um, 32 millimeters. Then we need the thickness. That's kind of clear, so I will go with um, 0 0.6 millimeters because I have a 0 0.6 uh, nozzle. Uh, let's see how that works out. And what else? As we have already the thickness, uh, I want to have for the outer perimeter, I want to have a, a bigger thickness, which in this case uh, might be something like 1.5, sorry. <laughs> outer uh, thickness. And for this, I want something like 1.5 millimeters. All right. Now, I would like to start with the, the overall geometry of the softbox. So I have a reference um, to, to reference it. Also, this will help me in the end to uh, do some Boolean operations on this. And what I always try to remember myself, and I forgot oftentimes, is to put everything in own components. That makes it so much more organized and um, so soft. Right, I shouldn't talk and, and write at the same time. Softbox. Uh, that makes it so much easier also to reference it later and, and get a general idea of what, what is going on and what is where. So softbox, let's start with this. We create a sketch and uh, I will put the basic uh, diameter here, which is, I think, let me double check. <laughs> yeah, 
which is 85 centimeters. I have no idea what that is in inches, actually. What is that in inches? What is that in inches, inches, inches? Which is 22.8 inches. Or 22, I should say, no, 22 uh, and four fifth. Do you say that? Whatever. Uh, <laughs> boop. Alrighty. Now this is the, the reference and this is gonna get the, the depth as a parameter. So I'm not using any actual values there, I put the, the depth itself. Alrighty. So with this out of the way, we can start with the, the first uh, component, the real component, which is the centerpiece. We call it center. And we're gonna reference and put a sketch onto the XY plane. And as the Prusa Mini has a print bed of 18 by 18 centimeters, or 7 by 7 inches, this is the largest I can, I can make it. And this is also the largest and the, the size of the tile. So we have to tile up the, the softworks, right? Uh, I want to have the, the tiles this dimension. So this is our reference for the rest of the, the project. Awesome. And now comes already the secret new, uh, let me disable the softbox outline, which is con confusing. Now comes already the secret new source yeah, of this approach, which is the extrude tool. So we click on extrude and instead of ignoring, like I did for the entire uh, earlier time of my, of my life, there's extrude here, but there's also thin extrude, which is extruding the outline of a shape and giving it a defined thickness, which is exactly what we want. So we select the outline. Or actually I can, yeah, like this. Uh, and then we give it a distance of the depth parameter. And you can already see what it does. Uh, it comes up with just extruding the outside, the shape of the sketch itself. Something that is important to note is the direction it is extruding to. It is currently it's extruding inwards, which is exactly what we want, because this is the, the biggest and the largest I can print. Something else you can also select going the other way or being in the center. We will use this for the actual polygons because there's it's it's important to to get the, the shape and the dimensions correct. But now we go with uh, inwards and the thickness we have also as parameter, which is thickness. So no, sorry, yeah, no. Huh. Now I, I will actually go with outer here because that's the outer um, outer side, outer edge of the, the shape. That is actually exactly what we are doing here. Maybe the future Bushy actually made one just to test it out, of course. Um, so this wall needs to be a bit thicker to give it more you know sturdiness, a bit more toughness, tough, rough. <laughs> it's a meme by now. Um, we will create this uh, as a new body. We go one direction, that is fine. Extend, direction, depth, fine. And we're good. Now we have the basic, basic, basic outline of what we are doing here. Now we can add a new sketch and create the actual polygon, which is here. And then this time we go with um, inscribed polygon and we give it a di diameter here, which is actually more radius than diameter. I'm not actually sure this is the right diameter I should use. Let me see. No, it's actually wrong. So I will not give it something. Let me set it up this way and then I will give it here. This dimension should be um, diameter. Uh, polygon. Yeah, polygon width, I, I called it. And this needs to be divided by two because it's only going from here to here and that's not the entire width, right? And something that's now really important are the two directional lines. We can um, hit X or click this button to make them construction lines and connect them to two sides perpendicular of the polygon. Um, for this one, it's kind of obvious that is just uh, following the, the Y axis, but this one is actually the secret source, I would say, of this approach because it's going perpendicular to the next 
edge of, um, of this polygon. All right, and now we are doing exactly the same as before. We go extrude, and now we select thin extrude, and select, or actually it's already selected, and give it a distance of depth. Right. And now for this one, we actually have to pay attention to not go inwards, but we want to have it on both sides, so center. And the wall thickness is, of course, thickness, which is thinner for the, for the inner polygon um, shapes. Good. Boom. It's a new body now. That's fine. We will combine everything together in a moment. And now we are good to go to apply the pattern tool. And this one we will apply actually to a feature and not a body or anything else. And then select the feature that we just used last, which is the thin extrude. And now we can select the, f the axis that we want to extrude to. We need to re-enable the sketch, the last one. There are our construction lines. And here we go. So let's try 9 and 9. And we go not extend, but spacing, because we know the spacing, which is the width of the polygon. And the same for this one. And we are almost, almost there. So we don't go only in one direction, we go in both directions, sorry, in both directions, symmetry, uh, symmetric. And now let's see if we cover the entire space of the surrounding enclosure, which we do. Now we could also suppress the, the other ones, but we don't have to. We can leave it at least for now. And I think we need to go with optimized. And there we are. There we go. So we have to make sure actually for this one that um, those compartments here are not going too small or getting too small. So if your dimensions or your orientation or your ge geometry is different, you maybe need to play with the diameter of the polygons. This is just what I found works for my case best. Now we need to get rid of everything else. And for this, we create ourselves a kind of helper um, body. We go back to the original sketch. And I'm actually not sure if... Can we do this already here? Intersect. I, I actually haven't... I have never tried that. Does that work? What does it do? Oh... I think it worked. Nice. Is that now a new body or not? Oh, that's interesting. That's funny. I've never tested it before. So that's actually a life, life together with me exploring that. That's, that's nice and that's fine. Now we need to get rid of the rest of the um, thingies there. Actually, do let's let's do one step back. So I will, I will go back one step. Sorry, one step, not, not everything. What we do first is combine all the bodies. Not the first one, because that's the, the outline of the, the shape. We combine all the polygons together. So we select all of them, and then we go to Combine, and join them together. And now we have a single body that is uh, covering all the polygons. All right, and now we're going to create uh, a work, a tool body based on the, let's get rid of the bodies first, and we need the original sketch. Let's create, come on, give me, give me the arrow, all right, okay, okay. So we create uh, a new body here, new body. Now we have a tool body that we will use uh, together with the modify to cut out uh, from the polygons, so which we select as targets, and then we select the tool, which, and then we go for intersect, and we can actually get rid of the tool, so we don't need to select keep tool. It's going to be gone after this operation. Now you can see that we accomplished exactly what we wanted, and um, it's it doesn't really matter how much uh, excess polygons we created in the first steps, 
they will all be uh, eliminated by the intersection tool, which is also a comment from the updated video that I did a couple of uh, days ago, or a couple of weeks ago, actually. And now we combine those two together as a last step. We join them and then we are good to go. And we have our first building stepping stone, building block, which is the centerpiece, but not only the centerpiece, that will be also above and below and left and right. So we have now five pieces of the entire circle covered. So as you can see, right, it's uh, going... The same can be put here and here and here and here. Now we need to work on something that can interconnect the different pieces together to form one, one plane. Um, and this is what we're going to do now. I will quickly save this as hexagon grid tutorial 2. I don't know why I call it 2. Maybe there was the first one, maybe not. I don't know. I won't tell. And this is what we do now. So for to do this, we uh, go and create a sketch here. And now we're going to reference a couple of those uh, other planes of the original... So we can... Uh, of the original hexagon uh, polygons to know actually where we can put openings. So I would like to have openings on both sides of the connecting pieces and then slide kind of a clamp uh, in between. This clamp might in the end look like... Oh, we lost it. Great. The clamp might, uh, you know, you can slide it then over both sides that holds it together with some springy force. And I hope that this will be enough to keep the entire um, grid in place and together. So we reference this and then we create helper lines right in the middle of them going straight down and straight down and straight down and straight down. Now we create uh, a construction line or actually two um, that goes all across and all across and now we cut, we cut the middle pieces out and then finally, oh, I shouldn't have done that, or should have done that. Uh, it's actually fine. Ah, no, yeah, correct. Uh, and now we make sure that um, the two spacings here are the same size. So we make sure those two are equal with the constraints equal component or equal tool. And then at the last step, we define what distance this should be. And I think that um, kind of eight millimeters is, is a nice distance. So it's not weakening the centerpiece too much but also gives a lot of space to clamp or hook like slide a hook over that it has enough yeah uh, wall thickness and, and wall material to grab on all right so so far so good oops i didn't want to do that finish now i created another sketch i didn't want that now we go back to the extrude and we go back to the thin extrude and we select the lines that we now created and that is also a great benefit of the thin extrude. You cannot just extrude something, but you can also cut through material using this approach. And to cut it exactly, we will go not to distance, but to object and select the inside face and make it a bit wider, like two millimeters. And now again, we need to make sure that we're not going only to one side but we go to both sides and the, the cutout actually sits right on top of this line, which is just perfect. Now look at what we did with this, with those simple steps. Now we have perfectly cut out wall sides where we can mount the hooks. Now we need to replicate this to all four sides. And that is actually very easy to do with the mirror tool. And again, we select not bodies here, object type, we go for feature and we select the cutout uh, extrude that we just did and we select as mirror plane as we put this right and we centered the original uh, outline to the center point we can now use the original uh, which is what is that um, XZ plane 
and you can already see it works exactly as it should. We go OK. Uh, and sometimes the tool or Fusion is actually buggy and this happens, which is not what we want. And if this happens, then you need to go back. Actually, here in the preview, it's fine. But then if you, if you execute the command, it fails. And if this happens, then you need to go from compute type adjust to, for example, optimized. And usually that solves the issue. I don't know why this happens. Doesn't make any sense, but yeah, programs, I guess. And now we need to put this also on this side and on this side. And for uh, in order to do this, we create uh, a, a mirror plane that goes diagonally through this center piece. And to do this and create this, we select this plane here, this outside and this other outside with a construction uh, mid plane here, which takes two planes and, you know, as it says, goes with the mid plane. And now we can again go to the mirror tool and again feature and select the cutout here, the original maybe, doesn't really matter, and select in the mirror plane bring it over here, just go with optimized, just in case. And now we have it here. Let's make sure actually, yeah, this is a bit tight here, I would say. On this side, uh, the, the polygons lay in the different uh, order, so that is why it's worked. So maybe actually I go back and move those slightly over so that those move a bit. Ah, this is also a bit tight. No, that's actually fine, I guess. But those are really tight to the... Uh, to the side of this polygon line there, so maybe let's move those, which are those, a bit more closer to the to the center. And to do this actually is very simple. We go back to the to the sketch that was defining those. Now we need to get rid of this constraint, which is putting the line on the center line between those two lines. Otherwise, it won't work. Here's another constraint. We need to get rid of this. Let's see if. Okay, they are constrained to go alongside with each other, which is great. The same hopefully here, exactly. Oh, okay. We need to give it a bit more constraint, so we... Right, uh, that, that already... Uh, uh, we <laughs> that already, uh, already applied it. Holy stokes. Uh, we will just pretend it never happened. Um, and now they go exactly as we want. And for this, uh, let's also do that, because good measure, right? It is already constrained. Why? Ah, it is already there. Cool. And now we only need to... Can we reference something here? No, we need to come up with a new helper line, which in this case, let's do it really crazy. Uh, let's say that those two lines should be always the same. Okay, that's funny. We need to add more constraints here. So it needs also to touch this as well as here. And now we give it a space from here to here, for example, which is, um, well, let's try six. Well, let's try it out. By the way, the lines went from blue to uh, white, which is exactly what we want. It means that the, the geometry is now set and actually um, not having any free constraints. Now let's see. Okay, we have enough space here. And here, is it actually what it actually did? I wanted to move it more to the center. Did I do that? <laughs> yes, I did. Okay, six. Let's actually go with four. Move it a bit closer. And now, obviously, as I'm changing this here, as they are linked together by all the steps we did in before, the... Um, as I'm changing the sketch here, it's also affecting and it ripples through all the changes that are building on top of this after that uh, and later. So now I think it's fine and there's enough space here to clamp it down. So I'm fine and it can be, yeah, we can leave it like this. That's actually good. All right. I think that concludes now. Let's get rid of this construction. That concludes the first basic shape that defines the new hexagon grid for the softbox. All right, something that I actually forgot is as the, the different segments will be, you know, sitting next to each other, uh, one after the other, 
And the, the printing, the 3D printing is usually squashing and squishing out material, especially on sharp bends like this one. What I want to add as a final step to the uh, center segment to add a chamfer on the sides. Actually, we can go inside, outside. I could have also done this to the original uh, outline of the shape, but uh, I forgot. But it's very easy to add it here. And we will go with something like this so that the corners are not going all the way to the, the corner and the edge, but be a bit rebidded so that any squished out material during the print process has some space not to widen the edge further um, and pushing it outside so that actually all the pieces can be sit butt to butt um, and be actually fine. fine. All right, now but this now honestly concludes and uh, really concludes the center piece. And now it's time to go to replicate this shape. This All right, a little intervention there. So the video was getting quite long at this point. So I, we are already 15 minutes into the video and we have just designed, you know, the basic shape of the, the hexagon. The entire design process took me over an hour and that's why I decided to cut it here and move it out of the way into a second video that I link you here. So if you're here for a Fusion 360 tutorial, by all means, check it out. The entire uh, build process is in there. But for now, I would like to focus on building. So first of all, showing you all the different pieces that I've been printing over the last couple of days uh, and then put them together and finally mount them to the softbox and see if the design ideas and the design, design decisions work out and work in the end. Maybe I show you all everything that I printed, which is this pile of mess that is currently, you know, occupying my desk and my desk is too small for it. So this one you have seen already in the original, uh, before actually in the intro, because I printed it before um, doing the, the tutorial now, testing it out. That is also why you can only see two pairs of slits and not four as the final one that uh, I designed for better strength and uh, adhesion between the layers. But you will also realize that actually here are more centerpieces that there should be necessary. So there should be one in the middle, then then two to the sides and above and below, which makes a total of, of five, right? But the thing is I printed actually way more. And the problem was, and I discovered it quite late in the process, you can see here, there are no slits on this side here. You know, my hand, my nose is actually a nice pointer. And why is this? Because I messed up and I forgot one step during the design process for getting one of the mirror planes to copy over the features. Long story short, I had to reprint basically more or less all center pieces, or I would have done that if I had enough filament, which I didn't. So I ran out of it. And that is why in the end you can see now I split it up and have different colors here, which I think will be okay for the softbox. So this is going to be my magic centerpiece, uh, a little bit of a you know, cool color in the middle. And then those will go into the mix, maybe on the sides. And then I have two more up and down here for the basic center shapes. And then come, and then come the corners. That actually went it also pretty nicely. That is Prusa Mint Galaxy Black. I love it. Comes out really clean on the Prusa Mini. And then finally, the corner pieces that will go like this to the center pieces. And no, the corners yeah, have their own uh, attachments. And then those clamps. And I printed now, I think, four of them for now with the little hooks that. Uh, you will see in the other video. And uh, yeah, with organic support, support, it came out great actually. Now, should we put it together? I can't wait to see the final end result. No, wait, we need a hammer. When you have a hammer, every 3D print looks like a nail. Old saying, the Greeks said that, I think. Ah, I forgot something. 
The most important thing, I think, are the attachment clamps. So I decided against a dull color like, like those because they will be pretty visible anyways uh, and having them in a lipstick red, that is Prusament lipstick red, um, I figured is a much nicer way to have kind of a, um, a detail. Let's call it a detail. It's a, it's a design detail, all right? By the way, if you're asking, I printed 128 of those. And I decided to make them smaller in the end because I figured that they don't need those big flaps because this is PLA, it will give into the force at, after some time. And if it's smaller, then there's less to give into. Right? So that is why I made them smaller in the end. Um, as opposed to what I came up with for those those clamps you can see they are much much smaller in in the like the wingspan is smaller <sighs> it doesn't help if you use the pieces that you have been explaining they don't have the slits. And if you already press fit them in, now I have to press fit them out again. I hate it. Now look at that. It is not moving. What is it? What is Oh, <laughs> I trapped. I trapped one inside and now it's rattling back and forth. Wow. Okay, that is actually a crazy good result, I have to say. It feels, I think it is much heavier, not much, it is a bit heavier than the old one, but that is not moving anywhere. It's completely stable and it holds together and it's really, it feels like a, like a thing. Like it is as if it is one piece, really. It feels as if it is one piece. As like compared to this one, which is the opposite. You can even hear that. It is flopping, it is rattling, it is bending, it is crackling open. It's, you see that? Like it's, it is not something that is really important for grit, but I mean, it is just sitting there. So it doesn't need to be like tough, rough, super stable, but at least it needs to make sure, or it, yeah, it, the grit needs to make sure that there is no light leaking on the side which for this one was definitely happening at some point. And that is exactly why I wanted to have a new one. And that concludes the build. I'm actually really, really happy how this turned out to be in the end. Now I have a flat surface of the softbox. It's following the curvature gently. There's no light leaking out the sides. It's just perfect. Except maybe for the color in the middle, the blue one, which I, I'm not sure if I like it. I have to figure that out. Maybe, maybe, you know, I don't know. Maybe I leave it, maybe I change it. I don't know, let's see. The benefit of this approach with the tiles is that, and the clamps that hold 
each client individually together, you can actually exchange them. Either if one breaks or if a color in this case, like in this case, uh, you don't like it anymore, you can exchange it, no problem. So if you liked what I did here, I would be really happy if you could express that by hitting this thumbs up button and consider leaving a subscribe because I have a lot of new cool features and projects coming up. And part of that now finally arrived, but I will not show you now what's in this uh, nice brown, brown box, but uh, that will be part of a new video that is coming out soonish. So if you're interested, stay tuned. Until then, I'm Bushi. It was my pleasure. See you next time. Over and out. Bye.